So you just got your new view board. Let's learn how to use it. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about using the view board with a built in PC. The PC module is actually installed on the back of the board on the right side. You'll see that there's a couple antennas sticking out on the top that shows you that it's the built in PC, not the two antennas that are on the bottom, the couple that are on the top. So what is a built in PC? Essentially, it's a module that lets your view board become a full computer. This will run Windows 11 and you can run full programs like Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. Now, really quickly, let's just review a couple of the buttons on the front of the screen. You'll notice that the blue button here, this is your power button. Blue is on, red is off. There's also this home or house button. Now, because we're using a PC module, we don't use a lot of these buttons like the home button. But if you happen to press the home button, it's going to take you to this screen. This is kind of uh, like the board settings, the view board system itself. Really what you need to know if you're using a PC module is that this screen, you don't want to use anything here. For example, you'll notice that you have the My View Board software. We don't want to use the My View Board software on the ViewBoard OS. We want to use it on our PC module. So anytime you see this screen, you're basically in the wrong spot and we need to switch back to our PC. In order to switch back to our PC, there's a couple ways we can do it. One, you'll notice that there's the four square icon here in the bottom left corner. This is the Windows logo. So it's telling you to go back to that Windows PC. So if I press that, you'll notice here that it's taken me back. And the way that I know I'm in Windows is I can see the Windows start icon. I can see some of those apps. Remember how I said you have more now because we're on the PC. You can see here that I have my full Microsoft Edge browser. Now, another way we can switch. So let's pretend we accidentally press that home button again and we're back in this area. We're in the wrong spot on the side of the panel. You'll notice that you have these little side toolbars. And if I click those, you'll see that there's an arrow at the bottom. This is your input switcher. If I press this, what it does is it shows the different inputs on the board, like the HDMI inputs. You'll notice one of them says PC. That's the same thing as pressing this button down here. So if I press that PC button, you'll see that it has now switched me back. So one of the first things to remember with your view board, if you have the PC module is you don't want to use the home screen. You want to use that PC module. So now that we have our PC turned on, let's just talk about a couple pro tips to help you get started. First things first, every time you tap, this is like clicking with your mouse. So a single click. So for example, if I single tap Microsoft Edge, you'll notice that nothing happens. That's because in Windows, you have to double click things or double tap. So if I double tap Microsoft Edge, you'll see here that it actually opened it up. If I go down here, you'll see that my apps, uh, this is called the taskbar in Windows. So all my different programs like Edge and you'll see the My View Board software is there. Uh, they dock down here at the bottom. So this lets me switch back and forth quickly. So if I tap there, you'll see that it just opens up Microsoft Edge. And every time I click or tap uh, or touch and drag, think of it like using your hand as a mouse. Now, sometimes you might want to type at the board. So you'll notice that if I wanted to come up here and I wanted to go to Google Earth, that I have this keyboard icon down here in the bottom right corner by my clock. And if I click that, that will open up an on-screen keyboard so I can type. But this keyboard is not there by default. So here's how you enable it. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a blank space on that taskbar on the bottom. Notice that this is a blank space. Also notice there's a little blank space right here. We're going to do what's called a right click. So right click on a mouse is pretty obvious. But when you're using touch, it's a two second touch and hold. So if I go one, two, you'll see that it did a right click, not a single click. You'll see here that I have this option called taskbar settings. And again, this is for Windows 11. What you're going to do is you're going to scroll down one finger, not two fingers. Make sure you don't get extra fingers in there. One finger to scroll. You're going to find here where it says touch keyboard. And what I want you to do is change it from when no keyboard is attached and make it like mine. I want you to make it to always. If you do that, what's going to happen is you'll have that keyboard icon in the bottom right. Anytime you need to type, you just tap that and ta-da, you have an on-screen keyboard that you can use. So let's talk about the whiteboard software because what makes an interactive panel really powerful is our program called My Viewboard. 
Now, My Viewboard is something that you have to download. You have to go to myviewboard.com slash download in order to get the software. Make sure you download the Windows version because again, this is a Windows module. You'll see here, I already have it installed. It's on my desktop. So I'm gonna give it a double click, one, two, and then that's going to open the program. Give it a second to open and you'll see that your whiteboard is open and ready to use. If you start touching or annotating on it, you'll see that it writes. The board is multi-touch, meaning you can have multiple students writing at the same time. You also have a stylus that comes with the board. You can use that to write as well, and I always recommend using the stylus so you don't get any accidental touches, say from your knuckles or bracelets or anything like that. Now the default tool that I'm using is down here in the main toolbar. This is called the pen tool. If I wanna change the color of my pen, I can touch that icon again, and you'll notice that I have other tools like the paintbrush, or I can even choose something like the highlighter. If I choose the highlighter, notice that I don't have pen anymore. Now I just have highlighter. But you'll also notice that your stylus has a pointy tip. If I write with the pointy tip, notice that it's a thin red pen. That's because the pointy tip uh, is detected as a pen and only a pen. So this is helpful because you can have something up here and I can be using highlight, highlight, highlight. And if I spin the pen around to the pointy side, now I have the pen instead of the highlighter. If you wanna change the color of the pointy side, just touch the pen icon with the pointy side and then you can adjust like the thickness or you can choose a new color. So now you'll notice that the pointy side is blue pen instead of thin red pen. Now next to the pen, you have your eraser tool. When I activate that, now when I touch, it'll erase. Or if I use the thick side of the stylus, it'll erase as well. But notice if I use the pointy side, I still have blue pen because the pointy side is always a pen and it will override whatever the active tool is. Now because our board is multi-touch, our software can detect other size of objects, not just the pointy side. So as an example, if I'm writing with the stylus and I wanna erase, I don't actually have to select the eraser tool. You can just make a flat palm like this and you'll notice it automatically activates the eraser. You can also do the same thing with the eraser that comes with the board. Now, if I wanna make a new page, down here you're gonna see this icon that looks like piece of paper plus. This is your new page button. If I press that, didn't erase everything, I'm just on page two. And the way I know I'm on page two is right here, it's showing the number two. If I click on that, it'll give me a PowerPoint type preview of all of my pages. Now, one more thing. In the bottom left of the whiteboard program, you'll see that there's this icon that looks like mountains. And the mountains are your backgrounds. This is really helpful because you have some templates that you can immediately use. You'll notice that there's things like lined paper and maps graph paper, maybe if you coach sports. Select one of these. You'll notice that it says apply to all pages or this page. If you do all pages, it will apply every page in your presentation. So normally we just select this page. Now I have a graph paper background I can use. So that's how we get started with your view board with the PC module. Keep in mind a few things. One, make sure you're using that PC module computer. Don't use the home screen. It's more powerful, it's got additional features. Remember, it's just a big touch tablet. So anytime you touch, it's like clicking with a mouse. And don't forget about the My Viewboard software. It's a really powerful tool. To learn more about the My Viewboard software, watch our other videos. We'll dive deeper into it. We'll learn things like how to log into the My Viewboard software so you can access things like your OneDrive or your Google Drive. Of course, we also offer on-site PD, so if you're interested in that, be sure to reach out to us and enjoy your new viewboard.